Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you thanking you yet again, thanking you yet again for another day. We thank you, Lord, because there are so many that did not awake this morning. There was someone traveling along the highway, Father, and there was a horrible accident and they did not make it. There was someone sleeping in their own home, minding their own business. And you called them and said, it's time. And Father, whether they were ready or not, they had to leave this life. And now, Father, I ask you as we bring your word to open up spiritual hearts, minds, and understanding that the hearer can receive this word. This is the chance that we get right now to receive you. This is the chance right now that we get to accept your truth. And it's only you that can open up your word to our hearts and our minds. And I'm asking again, Father, to open up their spiritual hearts, their spiritual minds, and their spiritual understandings that the hearer on today will ask the question, what must I do to be saved? These and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Let every heart say, thank God and amen. And you may have your seats. Hallelujah to his name. Let me thank as we do every opportunity that God gives us to thank all of those who have tuned in on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, and on Rumble. Thank you so much for tuning in. God has been so gracious unto us. You, you have been allowed to hear the word of God. There are some that cannot hear this word, friend. And they are walking around here. It is not that they're deaf. They have ears have been stopped spiritually by God. These are people who God have given up and they will not hear the word of God. Hallelujah to his name. I thank you so much for you that have. I know it ain't but a few, but you have tuned in again to hear old Pastor Harmon get up here and preach God's word. That is my duty. And let me ask you. You that have tuned in and, and that will tune in, I know it ain't but a few of you. Let me ask you to please help Pastor Harmon. How can we help you, Pastor Harmon? You can help by sharing this message. You can hit your share button, your watch party, and, and tag folks. I don't know how to do all that tagging and all I don't know how to do all that stuff. I do the best I can, and I rely on you, my friends, my brothers and sisters, to help me get the word of God out. Every time I get up here to preach, I'm here to warn you. I've been warning you for the last three years that I've been pastoring. Uh, every message has been a message of warning and how to get you to the king. There are many of you that listen to me now. You didn't know how to pray and you still don't know how to pray. And I do my best with you to pray with you, to lead you to the king. And all you have to do is talk to him out of sincerity What's in your heart? What you feel? Tell him. He knows you don't know what to say. But friend, as you get to know him, you will learn how to pray. Friend, I want to prevent, prevent you from going to this place. When I refer to this place, I'm referring to the pit of hell. There's no love. There's no grace. There's no mercy. There's no peace. There's no justice right there in that pit. And friend, I am the man of God today who comes to offer you Christ, the king. There are many that will never have this chance again. In fact, let me give you the number of them for today. The death clock. These are reported numbers as of midnight of those who have lost their lives here in the United States of America. Now these numbers grow exponentially as we go outside the United States and, and, and in the whole world. These numbers grow dramatically. But here in the United States, the Dev Clock claims that 3,633 souls have gone. 3,633. I know many would love to say, Pastor Harmon, they all have made it in and they all there with God. But friend, that is far from the truth. Many of them, as I speak right now, many of them are in this place screaming and hollering and telling God, I'll listen now, but friend, it's too late. Once you get there, it's over. 
My job is not to get up here and make you feel all happy and all that stuff, make you feel good about yourself. No, friend, my job is to warn you. I am not up here asking y'all for money and to send me this. And if you send me this, God is going to do that for me. No, friend, that's not what I'm here for. I don't even have a cash app. Don't, uh, there have been people that asked, where are you located at so we can send you something? And I've told them, friend, please, if you want to give Way of Life ministry something and you're not right here in this city, give it to those little churches that are in your area that are preaching the unadulterated truth. I'm not the only one. There's many of us. But there's far more of them liars out there. So give it to somebody in your city or state, where you, wherever you are, to help them. God will give me enough right here in this city to help me. And God has never let me down. I know, Rochelle, there's somebody out there that got enough love for me that will send me something if I ask them to. There's an old man over in Gardena, California. He loved this boy to death. And if I needed some, I'm sure he'd send it to me. There's three older ladies there in Gardena, California that loved this old boy. And if I needed anything, Rochelle, they'd send it to me. Hallelujah. All I need is for you all to help me to get the word of God out. That's all I need. I'm fine. My gift is on the other side. That's where I'm building up uh, my treasures, friend. Let me give you the title of today's message, and then we're going to go on. Hallelujah to his name. Let me turn this heat off because I'm about to burn up. I know I can't take hell. I can't even take what is it, 71 degrees in, in, in this building. I know good well I don't want to go to hell. And that's why I'm here to tell you today's message is to warn them. And friend, that's all I'm going to do is warn you. As I'm warning you, you're being taught as well. Now I'm going to ask you to do me a favor and yourself a favor once again. Please, friend, please, 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 I adjure you to get out your Bible. Get it out. Get out your Bible and follow me. Hallelujah. And let me apologize in advance. Sometimes I'm calling out scriptures and this beautiful wife of mine is trying to get there. When those scriptures come in my head and I yell them out, she's trying to get there and I be maybe ready to expound, but she ain't found it yet. Friend, I don't, she don't know never where I'm coming from. And sometimes I don't know. Hallelujah. So please, if, if she can't get there quite as fast, please bear with us. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. There's only about four of us here, faithfully. Mm -hmm. And we come uh, uh, every week and we try to produce uh, saints. That's what we try to produce. We ain't trying to produce friends. We're trying to pr produce saints of the most high God. And how do we do that? By giving them the truth and expounding on God's word so that you understand it. Hallelujah. So please bear with us and please bear with me. I've told you all that have listened to me and maybe one or two of you have started to listen and maybe three or four of you have stopped listening. But let me tell you to please bear with me. I'm not no good speaker. I don't know a whole lot of big words and all that stuff to try to impress you. I'm sorry. I don't know. All I know how to do is to give you the truth. And friend, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Give you the truth. I am here to warn them. Hallelujah. Rochelle, I want to start back in the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. And I want to start maybe at 20 and 25. That's where I want to start at, 20 and 25. And when you get there, let's go. Hallelujah to his name. And Dante, if you could put those scriptures on the screen for them, I would appreciate that. Acts 20 and 25. Uh-huh. It says, and now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God. Now let me just uh, get those up to speed that maybe didn't hear last week's message. Paul here has called for those Ephesian elders and he wanted to tell them some things, Rochelle, because this was going to be their last time seeing him alive. They would never see him again on this earth alive. But if they remain with the king, if they remain with Jesus, they would see Paul once they got on the other side. 
I have never met Paul Rochelle. The only way I've met him is through the words that he's written in this book about our Lord. And the words that he wrote in this book have led me to our Lord. Hallelujah to his name. And friend, one day, I'm looking to meet my brother Paul. Uh huh. When a Christ comes back to get us, I'll see him. Hallelujah to his name. Read again, Rochelle. And now, behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, I take you to record this day. Wherefore, I take you to record this day, since y'all not going to see me no more. I want you to know this day that none of y'all blood will be on my hand because I have given you the truth. Whether you accept it or not, I'm talking to you today that are hearing me. Your blood will not be on Pastor Harmon's hands because, friend, I have given you the truth. I have not held back anything. Hallelujah to his name. I didn't hold back because I wanted you to come. I didn't hold back because you were my brother or my sister. I'm talking naturally, so I did not hold back. I told y'all, my own family, uh -huh, most of them will not even come check on their brother. Hallelujah. And I followed them to the king. Hallelujah. But they have gone a different way. Hallelujah. They have gotten different beliefs. But friend, I'm sticking with the old way. Hallelujah. I know everybody ain't doing it the way Pastor Harmon is doing it. That's why this place is empty. But friend, none of these things move me. I'm not going to change. Read, girl. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. Uh-huh. For I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. See, I didn't hold back to tell you all the counsel. I didn't hold back from telling you everything. Some pastors will only preach on certain things, but they won't touch this topic right here. Friend, I will touch every topic that God puts on my heart. And I believe I have, Rochelle, in these three years. I have held nothing back uh, to you, uh, for you. Not one thing. I have held absolutely nothing back. And I have exposed these lying uh, teachers and preachers. I've exposed them. Not because I hate them, but because I love them. That if they shame, they may change their way. Hallelujah. But I have not shown to give you the whole gospel. I didn't just teach you some of it. I ain't just teach out of the book of Matthew. No, friend. Uh-uh. Pastor Harmon has gone through this book and given you what God has put on my heart. And friend, a lot of times, just about every time, I'm coming in hot and I got the word of God with me. Hallelujah to his name. Read on. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. Take heed. That means, wait a minute, stop, pay attention. Uh -huh. I've been telling y'all to walk circumspectively and not as a fool. Take heed to yourselves, pastors. Go ahead, Rochelle. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock, mm -hmm. over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers. Hold on. You are supposed to take heed, pastor and elders. You have been made overseers of the flock. Some of you have made yourself overseers. The Holy Ghost had nothing to do with it. All you were called to is salvation. Uh-huh. But if you're going to stand in that role, and I wish that you wouldn't, take heed to yourselves and to the flock that you pastor. You got to watch out for them, and that's what I'm doing. I ain't got but three or four people here that I'm watching over, but there's many that are listening to me, and I'm watching over you. That's why I'm here every Sunday preaching my heart out. I'm still watching over you. I'm giving you the truth. Hallelujah. And I won't hold back. Read on, girl. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers mm -hmm. to feed the church of God. I'm supposed to feed you. Get out your Bible. That's why, I, that's why I tell you, get your Bible out. Jesus purchased this church with his own blood. Uh huh. And if you're a shepherd, we're supposed to feed the flock. Hallelujah. What you going to feed them, pastor? I'm going to give them the word of God. That's what I'm feeding. It's feeding time right now. Hallelujah to his name. Are you hungry for the word? Are you hungry for God's word? Well, bear with this old boy right here. Get out your pen and paper. 
Get out something to write with and something to write on. Listen, friend, while God got me up here expounding this word, please don't fight among yourselves or who you're listening to or with. Don't fight them all and say he said this, that, and the other. No, friend, do that later. Uh-huh. Why? Because I don't want you to miss anything. Hallelujah to the name. I don't want you to, well, don't nobody ever do, but I don't want you to perhaps call me and say, Pastor Harm, what did you say that I ain't going to know? I'm going to tell you to go back and listen yourself. I ain't going to know. Hallelujah. I don't got nothing written out up here, Rochelle. There ain't no type messages out here that tell me to say this, that, and the other, and then uh, when you say this, wrap back and go, mm, and all that. I ain't got all that stuff. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to warn you. Read on. It says, take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers. Uh -huh. To feed the church of God, which ye have purchased with his own blood. Mm -hmm. For I know this, that after my departing shall grieve. Paul said, I know this one thing for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm about to depart here. I'm leaving and I'm not going to see y'all no more. Uh -huh. But before I go, I want you to know this, that after I depart, there are some grievous wolves that are going to come here and try to destroy you. They're going to preach doctrines that are not in that book. They're grievous wolves. They're going to preach things uh -huh, to make merchandise of you. They're going to preach things that make you feel good. And because it came from them, you ought to bless them. That's what they're going to preach to you. They are grievous wolves. And you know what? Some are even going to come right from among you. I told you, you elders that are following these crooked pastors, you can't be no better than the pastor. Hallelujah. Come on, girl. Before I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, mm -hmm. not sparing the flock. They're going to take advantage of you. They're not going to spare you nothing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, girl. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples. Listen to this. Them. Speaking perverse things to draw people away from him. These are grievous wolves, and they are going to speak perverse things. Why? To draw you away. Hallelujah. Don't listen to Pastor Harmon. Why? Why shouldn't they listen to me? Oh, because he mean. Does he tell the truth? Well, yeah, he tell the truth, but he, well, then you ought to listen to him. But there are grievous wolves that are going to come about and say, don't listen to him. They're going to draw you away from the king. Hallelujah. Oh, let me, let me slow down just a tad bit, Rochelle. Now that school is about out, I think kids with the prom and all that stuff uh, yesterday, and maybe they got something coming up and all that stuff, and they went out, and, and these kids are getting ready to leave school. And if you got a son or a daughter, hallelujah, that is getting ready to go off to college, listen, I'm telling you right now, friend, you better hug them and hold them and tell them how much you love them right now. I'm going to tell you right now, many of them ain't going to make it back. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, many of them, Rochelle, are thinking about they want to be like so-and-so and they see all these pastors with their, uh -huh, with all their Greek God license plates and all this stuff. And they thinking about, oh, I, when I'm going to pledge, I think I'm going to be an alpha. I think I'm going to be omega. I think I'm going to be a delta and all this stuff. Let me tell you, friend, you better stand here and hear the truth. Because grievous wolves are going to tell them, it's okay. Why are they going to tell them? Because they don't want to lose you. And then eventually they'll make a little money and then they got them kids to pay them too. They don't want to lose you. But Pastor Harmon is here to warn them. Hallelujah. If you got a son or a daughter that's planning on going to school, sit them down and tell, teach them the word of God. Sit them down and tell them what thus saith the Lord. Don't go pledging uh, to these sororities and all this stuff. Uh -huh. Your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, and he'll use any kind of trick he can to get you. Well, this sorority right here, we all about education. So once you pledge, uh -huh, this is a good sorority. 
See, we go side by side with God. Liar! Hallelujah. Don't do it. Let me tell you y'all's favorite nincompoop over there, Daryl Hines. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Let me shout your name again. Daryl L. Hines. God, don't get ya. Leading folks away. You and the rest of your clan of thieves and robbers. God is angry. Hallelujah to his name. You told people in your Tuesday night teaching and your Tuesday night misleading in what should it, be, it should be called. You're leading folks right here to the pit of hell. What did you tell them? Well, I'm not saying it's wrong to pledge. Huh? Well, what are you saying, buffoon? If you're a man of God, you stand up and say, no, don't do such a thing. These things are demonic. Don't have no part in them. Did you forget what Deuteronomy, uh, Dante, I'm sorry. Rochelle, put your finger there now. I don't got in my groove here. Dante, Dante give me Deuteronomy chapter six. Uh-huh. Start me at about verse four. Hallelujah to, I want verse four through maybe about seven. Now you better listen up, Mr. Hines, because you are leading people away from our God. And God is angry. Hallelujah. And those of you crooked pastors that are just like him and are teaching these children the same, oh, it ain't nothing wrong with pledging. Oh, that's just a school thing. Uh-huh. But you give yourself and your loyalty over to these things. God not going to share me with nobody, Rochelle. When you get there, read. Hear, O Israel, mm -hmm. the Lord our God. Now, hold on, hold on. Oh, Dante, swing that camera back here. I want these folks to know something. And actually, if you could do me a favor, can you please, son, before I go here, get me Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Let me justify this because there are going to be some idiots talking about, oh, well, you see. That, that was talking about Israel. That was, he, he got that wrong. Uh, swing it out there, Dante, so they can see it. And read it, girl. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. For whatsoever things that were written aforetime. That means before I was alive and you. Whatsoever things, Rochelle, no matter how big a thing, no matter how small it is, the scripture says, for whatsoever thing. Do you hear this, friend? Hallelujah to his name. Listen, if you read it on your cell phone, go on, take a screenshot of it and let that marinate in your soul. Give it to him again, Dante, for whatsoever things were written aforetime. Uh-huh. For whatsoever things were written aforetime mm -hmm. were written for our learning. They were written for us to learn from. That's why those things are written in the book. That's why I can go back to the Old Testament. That's why I can come to the New Testament. Rochelle, for whatsoever things were written aforetime or for our learning. Apparently, Brother Hyde, you have not learned one thing. But I've been preaching over 40 years and you're still not saved. You're still leading people away from the king. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Uh, finish reading that, Rochelle. It says, for whatsoever things were written for time, mm -hmm. were written for our learning, uh -huh. that we through patience, that we through patience, uh -huh. comfort, comfort of the scriptures, of the scriptures might, might have hope. Hallelujah. So I'm going to look at the examples of the Bible because that's where my hope is. That's where my comfort is. Get me back to Deuteronomy so I can drop kick these liars. Hallelujah. I wrote Deuteronomy chapter 6. Start me at verse 4, girl. Here, O Israel. Here, O Milwaukee. Here, O United States. Here, O world. Here, Pastor Harmon is warning you. Here, no matter where you are. Are you there in Kalamazoo, Michigan? Then here. Are you in San Francisco? Then here. Maybe you in New York. Maybe you in New Zealand. Then here. Hear, O Israel, uh-huh. The Lord our God is one Lord. How many is he? One. No, he's two. One. No, he shares himself with Delta. One. He shares himself with Greek organizations. One Lord. The Lord, our God, he's one. Come on, girl. 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Keep up with that camera, Dante. And thou shall love the Lord. I'm sorry, back God. up, back up. Start at five again, back up. Go ahead. And thou shall love the Lord thy God. Thou shall love the Lord thy God. With what? With all. With some. With all. Part of it. With all. Well, wait a minute. I gave part to Delta. So I still got another half left. You see, when I went to college, because my pastor said, well, well, I ain't saying it's wrong to pledge. Uh-huh. So I'm going to give God, well, maybe I'll give him 60, 70 percent Rochelle. And then I'll give the other half to Delta or Alpha or Old Sapphire, or whatever them Greek organizations are. Mm -hmm. God is not happy. Now, you better listen up, Mr. Hines, and you ought to go and correct yourself. But I know you're not going to do it. Hallelujah. I know you're not going to do it. Uh -huh. And all of you that are in these Greek organizations, I got a little niece that I love her to death. Would do almost anything for her, but she mad at her uncle. Why? Because I told her about this Greek organization that she belongs to. Hallelujah to his name. Let me just hold on just one second here. Because she's a Delta. Hallelujah. Let me just give you a snippet of what these old people are praying to Delta. Mm -hmm. This God that's not a God. Uh -huh. well, it ain't no religious organization. But you give yourself over to it. And God is angry. I am here to warn them. Hallelujah. Delta. Old Delta. This is what these folks are saying. I'm just going to give you a snippet of it because I can't bear to even look at this nasty, corroded stuff. Delta, old Delta. Let us hear thy gentle voice. All I want to hear is the voice of the king, Rochelle. I don't want to hear from no Delta. But these are the words you are saying. And these are the things that your pastor, your bishop says, I don't condemn them. Well, I'm not saying it's wrong. Well, if you ain't saying it's wrong, you're saying it right. You can't say both. Mm -hmm. Let me get through this, Rochelle, right here. Delta, oh, Delta, let us hear thy gentle voice. To hear the word, Delta, mm-hmm. It does something to y'all, apparently. And God is angry. Uh -huh. To hear the word, Delta, makes our heart rejoice. Uh -huh. Well, let me tell you, friend. The only thing my, makes my heart rejoice, Rochelle, is the word of God. Uh -huh. Whether I'm obedient or not to it, it's a rejoicing for me. If I'm disobedient, I rejoice in that now. I can become free and obey him. Uh-huh. I rejoice, Rochelle, if I've been doing the right thing, then I'm encouraged. Pastor Harmon is here to warn them. Hallelujah to his name. Uh -huh. Delta, old Delta, let us hear thy gentle voice. To hear the word Delta makes our hearts uh -huh, rejoice. Uh, though they were far, they are not far from thee. Yet our hearts will never be far from thee, Delta. That's enough of that garbage. Mm -hmm. Is this what you're telling them, Pastor Hines? Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, I gave you the wrong title, Bishop. Is this what you are telling folks? Y'all think Pastor Harmon telling a lie? Go there and look at the Tuesday night teaching. Call it a Tuesday night. It's a Tuesday night teaching that's going to take you right here to the pit of hell. And I'm here to warn them. What else that scripture say, Rochelle? And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. With all thy heart, every bit of it. If I give God, uh, sister baby, if I give God all my heart, I don't have nothing to give to Delta and all them other gods. Why? Because God got it all, Rochelle. I gave him all my heart. That ain't all I gave him. Read on, girl. And with all thy soul. I gave him all my soul. Uh -huh. The best way, I gave God all of me. Friend, I'm here to warn them. Read, girl. And with all thy might. Everything that's in me. Uh -huh. I gave God all my heart, all my soul, and everything that is within me. I gave it to the living God. No room for these old other gods. No room, Daryl. No room. Mm -hmm. 
See, this is what a true man of God gets up. And we proclaim the word of God. Paul said, I held nothing back. And Pastor Irvin ain't holding nothing back. I'm here to warn them. Come on, girl. And these words which I command thee this day. That he didn't ask it. He commanded. Do you hear this, friend? That's why every time I'm sitting around talking with somebody about the word of God and I'm trying to convince them. Hallelujah to his name. And they say some contrary. And the Holy Ghost give me in my mind this. Go here. Go there. Tell, give them that. Give, how y'all think Pastor Armand got all these scriptures in my head? Rochelle, how do you think? Hallelujah. It's the Holy Ghost, friend. Hallelujah to his name. That's why I told y'all to get out something to write with and something to write on. Uh-huh. Because I never know what God going to give me. Sometimes I know and sometimes I don't. Hallelujah. That's why you are to get out something to write with and something to write on. Uh-huh. God didn't ask me. He commanded me. What was the commandment, Rochelle? These words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. They shall be in your heart. Uh-huh. So that when I hear something, that's foolish. When I hear something, that's corrupt. My heart tells me, hey, wait a minute. You're not supposed to do that. When I hear, uh-huh, a supposed man of God or a woman of God that come and tell me, well, I'm not condemning pledging. Well, you just told me that it's okay. So I'm not going over there to Pastor Harmon because I already know how he feels, and I really want to pledge. So Christian Faith Fellowship, here I come. Mm-hmm. T.D. Jakes, I'm on the way. Uh-huh. Joe Osteen, lollipop man, here I come. Joyce Meyer, I hope you got room for me. Paula White, if Joyce ain't got room, I know you got a little room for me. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Kenneth Copeland, here I come. Y'all don't care what I do. Uh-huh. So I'm coming over there so I can feel comfy. I'm coming over there so I can get in my chair and snuggle there and, and feel all good and hear you talk about how good I am. How good you are, little Delta. Mm-hmm. But I want you to hear the words of the Lord. I'm here to warn them. What did it say, girl? And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in mm-hmm. thy house mm-hmm. and when thou walkest by the way mm-hmm. and when thou liest down. Listen, have you been doing these things, little Daryl? How could you forget? How could you forget the first commandment to love the Lord thy God how could you forget you got too busy worrying about yourself you got too busy making merchandise of the people hallelujah and I'm here to warn the people I'm here to tell them Uh uh-huh read on Rochelle and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. Mm-hmm. And thou shalt bind them for a Now listen, that sounds just like about everything you could think of. Rochelle, when I get up in the morning, I'm going to remind my children. Before I lay down, I'm going to remind my children. While I'm there at the dinner table, I'm going to remind my children. At graduation, while they're picking their college, I am to remind them. That there is no other God that comes before our God. I'm to remind them. Hallelujah. Read on, Rochelle. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, mm-hmm. and they shall be as frontless between thy eyes. Uh-huh. So everywhere I go, I see them right there. Uh-huh. We don't have to do that now because, see, we got the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. The Holy Ghost remind me. I ain't got to put it right there between my eyes. I ain't got to nail it on my doorpost. Why? Because the Holy Ghost reminds me. If you had the Holy Ghost, friend, you'd know. Mm-hmm. But obviously, there's something missing. Or you got a, a new Holy Ghost. Read on, Rochelle. What did it say? And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house mm-hmm. and on thy gates. That's enough. And- I'm telling you, friend. Uh-huh. I'm here to warn you. I'm here to give you the truth. Uh-huh. So if you got a child that is graduating, getting ready to go to college and all that stuff, warn them. Hallelujah. God wants all of you. He's not willing to share you with anybody. Hallelujah. I hope my niece is hearing this today, girl. I love you. Uh-huh. 
I love you. All them pearls and stuff you selling. Don't you know what that stuff represents? 18 of them, I believe, is for these 18 fools that founded this thing. And I believe the other two is for the other nincompoops that incorporated it. Get yourself out of there. Get incorporated in this book. Get in the pages of this book and shed some tears on the pages of this book. Hallelujah to his name. Don't you go off uh -huh, and get into these other organizations because God ain't going to share you with nobody. Hallelujah. Oh, in fact, oh, Dante, give me, uh, give me Mark chapter 12. Hallelujah to his name. He's not going to share Rochelle. God ain't going to share you with nobody. Hallelujah to his name. Give me, uh, start me at verse. Hallelujah to his I want Mark chapter 12. It's, no, I don't want to go there. Not right now. Just give me back over here, Rochelle, to if he, in, uh, in the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. God ain't going to share me with nobody. Uh-huh. Come on in the book of Acts. Will we stop that? Therefore, watch and remember that by... By the space of three years, I cease not to warn. Now I want to remind you, friend, that Pastor Harmon been preaching up here for three years. And I have not ceased to warn you about uh, life and these people that are leading you. I have not ceased. I have been threatened. Uh huh. I've been shunned and I've been talked about. But I have not ceased to warn you. I, every time I got up here, I have warned them. Just like I was commanded to do. Warn them. Hallelujah. And these people are coming up with all kind of stuff. Read it, Rochelle. <coughs> Therefore, watch. No, back up. Give me go to scripture before that. 30. Mm -hmm. Also, of your own selves shall men arise, mm -hmm. speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Uh huh. You see? They are drawing away disciples after them. So they'll tell you, ain't nothing wrong with pledging. Ain't nothing wrong with doing this, that, or the other. Ain't nothing wrong with having this kind of business, selling these kind of intimate product, products. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Long as you can bring your tithes. These folks are drawing you away from the king. And Pastor Harmon is here to warn you. Read on, Rochelle. It says, therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years. Watch and remember. Watch and remember what Pastor Harmon has been up here doing and teaching. Go ahead, Rochelle. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, uh -huh. I cease not to warn. I cease not to do what? I cease not to warn. Paul said, but over the course of three years, I cease not to warn you. I cease not to give you the truth. I've been warning you day and night with my own tears. I cease not to warn them. I'm telling you, friend, I have not ceased to warn you at all. No, I have not. People are teaching things from the very God that delivered them. They're teaching things that's contrary. They're teaching things that are leading you away from the king. Hallelujah. Dante, if you will, uh -huh. can you please find that little video talking about a new Holy Ghost? Now listen, friend, I'm going to tell y'all. Uh -huh. I don't care what nobody has told you. You have to get, you receive the way, the Holy Ghost, the way the book said we do. There is no other way. If somebody come telling you, uh-huh, well, you know, see, uh, God's going to give everybody the Holy Ghost different. You may, uh, you may just be sitting in your, in your house with your adulterous wife, and then God may say, start speaking. And there you start going ooka dooka, skooka booka, and all that stuff. And, and then some of y'all going to say, well, that pastor was preaching, and uh, I saw a flame of fire. Mm -hmm. And because I saw that flame of fire, uh -huh, uh, I got the Holy Ghost down on the inside. And here come your lying, no good pastor and say, yeah, that's right. You see, God gave you this a new Holy Ghost. You ain't, some of y'all, don't even worry about it. Y'all ain't got to speak in tongue because God going to give you a, another tongue. You ain't got to worry about that one. Dante, put that nincompoop on the screen. Rochelle, turn your mic off for a second. And everybody was standing. That's what I keep saying. I keep saying the angels of the Lord do this to the body of Christ behind the pandemic. And all of a sudden, everybody is getting up 
No, you, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. Everybody is getting up. And I keep seeing fire, fire fall. But it's not, it's not the fire that we think of. I keep seeing, I keep seeing the fire with blue in it. And, 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 so, and so I did a study that said that blue represents the truth. And I said, I said, God, my God, he, I, I keep seeing that there's getting ready to be a different baptism of the Holy Ghost. And he said, tell the people to get ready. Because the tongues that you speak in now, you won't know them anymore. Because I'm getting ready to baptize you. I'm getting ready to baptize you with a different double portion of the Holy Ghost. Watch this. And it's going to be the real fire and not something tangible. It's going to be something that's going to put you out for days. It's going to be something that's going to keep you up all night long. You're going to ascend and descend. You're going to travel up into the heavens and look at the books of God and come back and speak of it. Who am I preaching to right now? Somebody better open up your mouth. All right, get I that nincompoop off the screen. Turn your I mic back on. I feel God in this place. I All right, get that nincompoop off the screen. Get her off my screen. Mm -hmm. You going to get, did y'all hear uh, yourself? Came out of her own mouth. These people are teaching doctrines of devil. There's going to be a new Holy Ghost. The one, that, the one that was here, that's old. You ain't going to speak in tongues no more. Listen, friend, I'm here to warn you. There is no new Holy Ghost coming. Nowhere in the scriptures. Rochelle, go back there and flip that speak on. There is no new Holy Ghost coming. You can forget it. You ain't going up into heaven and reading the books of God and all that stuff and coming back down here. No, friend. Those are doctrines of devils. These people are delusional. Now what you going to say? Pastor Harmon, you lied on them. You didn't tell the truth, Pastor Harmon. You heard it out of your own mouth. A new Holy Ghost. I saw some blue fire. Listen, friend, I'm here to warn you. Don't follow these folks. These people are cursed. Don't follow them. Uh-huh. A new Holy Ghost. You go, all the tongues y'all used to speak in, don't, don't do that no more because that Holy Ghost is being replaced. You blasphemed, sister. You have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Talking about he going to be replaced. And lied and said, God said it. I feel sorry for you. You are cursed. In fact, oh, Dante, get this old man over to Galatians. Give me the first chapter of Galatians. Roche, I want verse, start me at verse 6 through my, maybe 10. Uh-huh. Y'all heard it yourself. You still want to call me crazy? You still want to not join Pastor Harmon and fight for the truth? Whether you're going to join me or not, I wish that you would. Every Sunday, I'm getting up here with my dukes up. I'm fighting against lying, cheating, and robbing and stealing. I'm fighting. Uh-huh. There's going to be a new Holy Ghost. She said it. I didn't. They've taken doctrines of devils. What did it say, Rochelle? Galatians 1, verse 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed. Dante, catch up. Hold on a second. Did, is he there? I won't, I, I won't get there. Okay, let's go. He got it. I, I just want to make sure that those people that are listening to me are seeing the same thing that you're reading so that you can see the scripture. You can see that Pastor Harmon did not change it. That's why it's imperative that I make sure that you got the scriptures up there right. I got a monitor up here so I can see what's going out to you. I don't want no mistakes. Hallelujah to his name. Read on, Rochelle. You're doing good back there, Dante. I know sometimes that thing's a little slow. Go ahead, girl. I marvel that ye are so soon removed. I'm baffled. Uh -huh. Let me try to interpret it so you can understand it. Paul says, I'm baffled that you so soon remove from the gospel that I preached to you, that the gospel that I left you with. I'm baffled that you done changed your mind on it. I'm baffled that some of y'all are saying that's coming a new Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm baffled. I marvel that you can tell a person that ain't nothing wrong with pledging to another God. I marvel at such a thing. I marvel that it would even come out of your mouth. Read, girl. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Unto another gospel. But there ain't no other gospel. 
So when y'all talk about, well, I follow the prosperity gospel, let me just enlighten you on one other thing. There is no other gospel. You that follow this other gospel. Well, Paul says it better than me. Read it again, Rochelle. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another but there be some that trouble you. But there be some that trouble you. It says, which is not another. There ain't no other gospel is what he said, Rochelle. There ain't no other gospel. But there be some there that trouble you. Daryl Hines, you're troubling me. Juanita Barnum, you're troubling me. Uh-huh. All you young saints ought to be standing with me today and saying, Daryl, you, you troubled me. Bishop T.D. Jakes, you troubled me. Joel Lowstein and all that crew, you trouble me. But here this little old pastor is because I'm a little old nobody. Ain't nobody hearing me. I'm here jumping up and down and screaming and trying to get your attention. And you see me out of the corner of your eye. And you say, oh, that's that old crazy Donnie. Uh, he teach you can't almost do nothing. Come on over here to my pastor. You can marry who you want. You can try your girlfriend out before you marry her. See, I like the gospel they preach. And the gospel they preach tells me if I keep giving to them, one day I will have a whole lot of money. One day I'm going to have a new car and all this stuff. But let me just warn you, unlike God sent me here to do, there is no other gospel. But there be some that trouble you. I told you it's them old crazy pastors that you hooked up with. And what do they do to the gospel, Rochelle? And will pervert the gospel. You see, friend, they have perverted the gospel. They said it out their own mouth. Juanita Bynum has perverted the gospel, talking about God told her, y'all finna get a new Holy Ghost. Go on to Tuesday night teaching and don't stay there long. Listen to that nincompoop telling people, well, it's all right. I'm not saying that pledging is wrong. Go on over there to T.D. To, uh, Jakes and listen to that idiot go on talking about I'm God's business partner and God owe me and I put God in debt. Go on over to Joel Osteen so he can tell you that homosexuals are going to be into heaven. Go on over there and listen to him. Since you won't listen to the truth. Since you won't listen to this warning. Then you're going to be cursed. Read it Rochelle. What did it say? But though we or an angel from heaven. But though we or an angel from heaven, Paul says, no matter how good I preach, uh -huh, I already told y'all I ain't no good preacher. Uh -huh. So if those that can bear to listen to me, uh -huh, though Donnie or any uh, angel from heaven preach another gospel, uh -huh, they are cursed. Uh -huh. So I don't care how good and charismatic your pastor is. If he preach another gospel, he's cursed. Where do you see that at, Pastor Harmon? Put it back on the screen for him, Dante. Read it, Rochelle. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached uh -huh. unto you, let him be a curse. Let him be blessed. Let him be a curse. Let him be a good guy. A curse. Let him be a know-it-all. A curse. The scripture says, let them be accursed. Uh-huh. If anybody preach any other gospel, let them be accursed. Mm -hmm. Now call Pastor Harmon a lie. That's why I tell you to get out your Bible and follow me. That's why I tell you that. Open up your book and follow me. Where did that idiot come with that at? Tell me, where did, where did she dig that up, Rochelle? It ain't in the book. That's why I say, follow me in God's word. Follow me. Mm-hmm. So we can remind you. Mm -hmm. What verse number is that, Ro Rochelle? That was eight. Read that one more time for, for me. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel mm -hmm. unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. You see, friend, is that the kind, do you want to take a chance with your soul and be cursed because you're following another gospel? Pastor Harmon is here to warn you day and night. Every time I sit down at a table with these gentlemen to have a conversation, I'm warning them in some way or another. Sometimes, very few, but sometimes I see another brother there uh -huh, that's able to help me. Why? Because we got the same gospel, Rochelle. Hallelujah to his name. I want to be able to depend on you that I preach to. I want to be able to rely on you 
that we preach the same gospel. Hallelujah. But you heard these people yourself saying it out of their own mouth. So the Bible says that they are cursed. Hallelujah. Rochelle, I'm going to get over back over to Acts. I ain't forgotten now. Uh-huh. Dante, please, son, get me over to 2 Peter uh, chapter 2. Start me at verse 1. Let me run up and down the back of these old false lying prophets and teachers. Hallelujah. I hope y'all writing some of this stuff down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most of it I'll be able to give you because it's in my heart. But if you want particulars, you're going to have to go back and read it. And then I go back with you and listen to it with you myself. Hallelujah. What did it say, Rochelle? But there were false prophets. Also. But there were good prophets. False prophets. Now this is talking about y'all pastors. Anybody who is not preaching the unadulterated word of God, this talking about y'all. This talking about you, no good uh, deacons and preachers and pastors and bishops and laymen. This talking about y'all. Read it, girl. But there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you mm-hmm. who privately shall bring in damnable heresies. They're going to privately bring these things in. You see, Juanita Bynum had a whole group of folks that she gave it to them, snuck it in on to them. And she don't know what she's doing because, see, she has accepted a doctrine of, of a devil. Uh-huh. And she's pushing this stuff. And in her mind, as mixed up as it is in her mind, she think it's right. And then they, that she preached to, go out and spread this poison. And friend, I don't want you to spread no poison. I don't want y'all to go around talking about, oh, it ain't nothing wrong with pledging. I don't want you to spread that poison. Mm -hmm. I've got the serum for that poison. Will you accept it? I'm here to warn you. Read, Rochelle. It says, but there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them. Even denying the Lord that brought him, brought them. Jesus said that he would send us a comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. That woman has denied him, talking about there's another one coming. What did our Lord Jesus say? He shall send us the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. He didn't say no other one was coming. He didn't say nothing about me or you going up into heaven and all that stuff and reading books and coming back down here and expound. He didn't, the scriptures ain't said nothing about that. They are bringing in damnable doctrines, denying the very Lord that brought them. And they should bring upon themselves what, what kind of destruction, Rochelle? Swift. Swift destruction. Read on. And many shall follow their penurious. And many shall follow their insincere ways. Why do you think? Oh, Dante, uh, can you please again uh, roll, roll that camera back so they can see the sanctuary? Uh-huh. Roll it on back, son. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See, many are going to follow their way. Let me tell you where all the people that should be here, let me tell you where they're at. they right with, the, with, with them liars. Many are going to follow their ways. Ain't nobody coming here. Why will oh, you preach too hard? I can't do nothing because I, I want to go out and have a little fun. I know the Bible says sin is pre- pleasurous, but you ain't supposed to take part of it. Well, down here, we all got to have a little something to do. Well, rejoice in the Lord, my friend. That's what I do, Rochelle. And many shall follow their presumptuous ways. Come on. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. That's why God's word is spoken evil of. Because of these insincere people that get up and teach anything. And then folks say, I ain't going there because all they do is ask for money. Uh, I ain't going there because all they talk about is the number three. Uh, three. Uh, I was driving behind a car and I saw the license plate said three, three, three. And I scratched my head. I said, God, you trying to tell me something. Then I drove on a few blocks and I came out of a building. And guess what the address was? Three, three, three. Yeah, God, you trying to tell me something. What you trying to tell me? Well, us, when I get to church, I'm going to ask the people to give $3.33. No, I better change that because $3, that ain't enough. Give $333. That's what God is saying. And if you give it, you're going to be less blessed. You liar. And God, go get you. Come on, Rochelle. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Uh-huh. And through covetous shall they with fringe words make Through covetous and their insincere words, through their covenants, they ain't going to never get enough. Uh-huh. 
they're going to see, oh, like Kenneth Copeland, he saw this plane. Now he got another one. Now he got about seven or eight jet planes out there. He ain't going to never get enough. And through his insincere words, I love you all. God loves you. He wants you to give. No matter what, don't stop giving. Insincere words. They shall make merchandise of you. Come on over here uh -huh, and buy my wife scrub face creams and all this stuff. Come buy this stuff, y'all. Uh -huh. You see how blessed we is. So come and we're going to give you all a discount. Come and buy Sister Pam's so fresh creams and hand lotion and the body scrub. Ooh, try the body scrub. Come buy that. God gonna bless you. Uh huh. And you guess what? We're getting you two for one. If you buy the face cream, we'll give you the body scrub. You're gonna need all that. It ain't gonna do you no good. But it's all going right here to this pit. I wish you would hear me and take this warning and teach God's word. That's what I wish you would do. Instead of making merchandise of the people. What does the scripture say, Rochelle? And though covenants shall they with fringe words. And through covenants, uh-huh. Make merchandise. They shall make merchandise of you, uh-huh. Whose judgment now of a long time. Y'all think y'all getting away. You're not. You think because ain't nothing happened to you now. You think because sales is going through the roof that you're blessed. Nope. Mm -mm. News alert. Whose judgment stop right there, Rochelle, so they can hear you loud and clear. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, mm -hmm. and their damnation slumbereth. It, it ain't sleeping. It's coming, friend. It's coming. Read on. For if God spared not the angels. If God spared not the angels, that sin. But, huh? In fact, uh, I'm going to do a little teaching there. But, but go ahead. Go, go on. Finish that. For if God spared not the angels that sin, mm -hmm. but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, mm -hmm. he reserved unto judgment uh -huh. and spare not the old world but save Noah in the eighth mm -hmm. a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly uh -huh. and turning the cities of Solomon and Gomorrah listen up you uh, homosexuals that love to sleep with each other listen up you homosexual pastors you bisexual pastors just love to sleep around with other men listen up Here's an example of what's going to happen to you if you don't change your way. Can God forgive homosexuals? Of course. That's why I'm here preaching to them, giving them the truth so that they can be saved. Uh huh. But some of them just going to keep going to these churches that accept that stuff. Uh huh. Yeah, there's a little old bishop here in the city. Uh huh. Pans and stuff so tight. I thought he was a woman. Turn around, talk about he a bishop. Uh huh. We are to dress modest. Uh huh. Not to wear stuff all tight and everybody can see your blood pressure. What kind of fool are you? A crazy one. That's what kind of fool you are. But friend, I'm here to warn you. Uh-huh. So all you that are going to these open and accepting churches, this is where you're going to wind up. Right here in the pit. And turn in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Read on, Rochelle. Into ashes. Mm -hmm. them, them with an overthrow, mm -hmm. making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. These are examples. All of you all that should live ungodly. This is an example unto you. The scripture just told you right there itself. An example to all of those uh, who should hereafter live ungodly. That's what's going to happen to you. You're going right here to the pit. You're going to be reserved in this tank to the day of judgment. That's where you're going. Mm -hmm. Finish up, Rochelle. And delivered just Lot, black with the filthy conversation. Okay, of you the went past six. That's fine. Okay. But let me expound here a little bit. Uh huh. Let me now, uh, friend. I really want you to get out your pen and paper here. Uh huh. Because you see, I want to. I want to tell you what you what you're dealing with and what you're fighting against. Hallelujah. So please get out. This is very important. This is very important. So please. Uh, get all them things that's bothering you, cut the TV off, and just listen to this message here. This is very important. This is about who you're fighting against. Rochelle, we got our fists up, and some of us don't know who and what we're fighting with. Your adversary is an old friend. Hallelujah. Some of y'all think y'all fighting uh -huh, with Satan and, and those third part that was cast out. Y'all ain't fighting with him. Well, he's the chief of it, but they ain't who you're dealing with right here fighting with. 
These, that's not who uh, is indwelling these folks right now. That ain't him. In fact, Rochelle, please uh, let me just break the two down. I'm sorry, but this is what a teacher does. Uh, if you get me Ezekiel, Dante, try to get me Ezekiel chapter 28. Start me at about verse 12, maybe through about 19 there. I want you to understand something. You need to understand who you're fighting with. I'm here to warn you who your adversary is. Now, the devil is your adversary. Uh-huh. But he ain't possessing you. It's something else he is. So I want you to follow me. Rochelle, when you get it, I want you to, let's go. Son of man, pick up a limitation. This is another thing while I'm, I'm talking that I want you to notice. God is talking to Ezekiel here. And he don't call him a son of God. He call him who? The son of who? Man. Now keep that in mind. Son of man, come on. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, thus saith the Lord God. This is what God is saying to the king of Tyrus. This is what God is saying to Lucifer. This is the very first uh -huh, fall. This happens before. Uh -huh. This happens before Adam and Eve are created. This is the very first fall. Read it, Rochelle. Take, th sorry, thou suit, son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyre mm -hmm. and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up the son, some full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Mm -hmm. That's how he was when God created him. Read on. Thou hast been in Eden. Thou has been and eaten. Now hold on, stop right there. Who else you know that's been and eaten? Mm -hmm. Who do you know? Y'all talking about this, talking about a man. No, this is twofold here, Rochelle. This, what God is saying here in Ezekiel chapter 28, this is twofold. But I'm giving you the fold that is talking about uh, Satan, Lucifer. This is what I'm expounding to you. Please don't try to fight with me right now. Just let me finish and then you can d d fight among each other when you're at a table after I'm done. Because after I'm done, you might start to agree. Read on, Rochelle. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. Mm -hmm. The sardis, topaz, and the diamond. The beryl, the onyx, and the jasper. The sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, And gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee. He was a beautiful being that God created. And in him was created tablets and pipes. Uh -huh. Lucifer was a walking instrument. <coughs> Excuse me. That's why most of you are deceived through music. Mm -hmm. That's why he'll have you snapping your fingers to a song that's talking about adultery and fornication. And there you go singing that thing and you're saying that thing. And I want you to remember that every, 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 every idle word that you quote out of your mouth, you shall give an account for. You sneaking in the back door. Well, I was just singing a song. It came out of your mouth and you're going to give an account for it. In him was created tabrets and pipe. It's talking about Lucifer. Read on, girl. Was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherubim that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Mm -hmm. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou you, was Lucifer created. was perfect. Uh, when the day he was created, Rochelle, he was perfect. He was beautiful until iniquity was found in him. So, uh, Pastor, you were perfect. You walked upright until iniquity was found in you. T.D. Jakes, you may have started off. You may have been perfect and upright when you started. But now, my friend, iniquity has been found in you. And I'm here to warn you. Oh, but he's so little, ain't nobody going to hear him. Well, the warning is out there. Hallelujah to his name. All of you pastors uh -huh, that puff yourself up and allow people to puff you up. You used to be perfect in your way until iniquity was found in you, just like your father. Read it, Rochelle. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with it. By the, mur by the multitude of all the stuff y'all got. By the multitude. Uh, see, say, Lucifer thought, because he was so special and so pretty and had everything that, you know what? 
I don't need God. I'm going to take over God's throne. And that's how most of you are today. But I'm here to warn you. You are not a God. You are just a man. And thou shall be brought down to hell. Read it, girl. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. God is going to, has going to cast Lucifer out. Uh-huh. Because he was lifted up in pride. This is the first fall. This is Lucifer with that third part of he heaven's angels that he's descend. Uh-huh. That's what this is talking about. But these ain't the angel, these ain't the angels that you're fighting with. This not them. Read on, Rochelle. What did it say? And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Mm -hmm. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Mm -hmm. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings and that they may behold thee. Mm -hmm. That's um, enough, Rochelle. Dante, give me over. Let me just confirm that. Give me over to Isaiah chapter 14. Start me at verse. Uh, start me at verse number 12. Mm -hmm. This is not who uh, we're fighting with right now. He's our ultimate fight, but there are things that are in you. This ain't them. It ain't the devil himself, and it ain't the third part that he deceived. This ain't who uh, is in you right now. They call it mental illness. No, these are demonic spirits, but this not them right here. Let me finish telling y'all about y'all daddy. Read it, Rochelle. 14 and 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? But thou hast said in thine heart, what did he say, Rochelle? I will ascend into heaven. I will ascend. He's going to go up there and take God off the throne. Read on. I will exalt my throne. He's going to exhaust God. his own throne. He's going to take God out and exhaust his own throne. Listen to y'all daddy how crazy it is. Now how crazy he is and how crazy you are to follow such a thing. Read on. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Mm -hmm. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Mm -hmm. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. He wants to be like God. He wants to replace him. But let me tell you, friend, God heard these loud and boisterous thoughts of Lucifer just like he hear you today. Hallelujah. The things that you say in your heart, God hears them loud and clear. The things that you murmur in your bedroom and while all the lights out and the doors closed, God hears them. Now give me God's response, Rochelle. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell mm -hmm. to the size of the pit, that they, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, mm -hmm. that did shake kingdom? Hold on right there. That's good, Rochelle. Now, friend, these are not the spirits that you're fighting with today that are indwelling people. I'm here to warn you who your enemy is. I'm here to warn you who you're fighting with. Do you want to know? Well, friend, stick with me, and I'm going to give you the truth. Let me see what time it is, Rochelle. Hallelujah to his name. 12, 18, maybe I can go a little further. Now I'll tell you if you quick, quick, quickly, give me the book of Mark. And I ain't forgot, Rochelle, I'm coming back there, but this was a teaching moment. Now tell you, give me the book of Mark, uh, chapter 5, start me at verse 1. Now listen, friend, these, uh, those spirits are locked away. Those, they're buying. Ro, uh, Lucifer, Satan, and the third part of heaven ages, they're bound. When you say somebody is demon possessed, they ain't possessed with them, they bound. Uh -huh. But here is a man who has some demon in him, Rochelle. And, and we, if we can't get to it today, I promise you, I'm going to come back next week. And I'm going to give you who and, and the origin of who we're fighting with and who that man was fighting with. Read it, Rochelle. And they came over onto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gatherings. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Uh-huh. See, nowadays we call these folks that are acting like this man here. 
Uh-huh. We call them, uh, they are mentally challenged. We call it mental illness. Uh-huh. But we know, we that are saints, and we believe God, we know what they are. They're demon spirits that have possessed these people. Uh-huh. Well, we need to pray for the pastors because pastors are putting guns in their mouths and blowing off their heads. Uh -huh. That's because they demon possessed. Mm -hmm. Every one of them that do such a thing, they're demon possessed. Talking about they was a pastor. Pastors don't do that. Hallelujah to his name. We preach deliverance. We don't get up here and preach unless you up here lying. Get up here and preach and then go home and put a 45 in your mouth and bam. You see, when you mock God, that's what happens. That little fella, Ryan Chandler, who was supposed to be some big internet preacher and all this and had all these shows and went out to go meet some uh, fling, to have some fling with some guy. He's dead as Julius Caesar. Let me show you where he at. Come on, follow me. He's right here in the pit of hell. How can you say that, Pastor? The scripture already done told me. When you mock God, that's where you're going to end up, right there in the pit. Listen to about this man. Read it, Rochelle. It says, who had his dwelling among the tombs? Mm-hmm. And no man could bind him. No, not with chains. They couldn't settle this guy down, Rochelle. They couldn't put handcuffs on him because he'd break them. They couldn't put feathers and all that stuff. He had so much strength, he would break them. But it was not him. It was the thing that was in him. It wasn't the man that saw Jesus coming up and ran over to him and said, don't torment us. That wasn't the man. That was the thing that's in him. Hallelujah. You that are all having all these ungodly thoughts, that ain't you. You've accepted it, but that's that thing causing you to do these things. Read it, Rochelle. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, mm -hmm. and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Mm -hmm. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself mm -hmm. with stones. Uh -huh. All these people that you out there on dope, they don't allow that gateway to take these demon spirits in. And now they out there howling at the moon. Ooh, ooh. And y'all call the nut truck to come and get them. It's something in them. Them people that are out there eating other people. Uh huh. It's something in them. That's causing them. The same thing with this man right here. The same thing. Them same demons. They still strutting around here. Uh huh. And I'm trying to warn you about them, but you won't hear me. Oh, Donnie, that's crazy what you're talking. You listen at it right there in the scripture. Read on, Rochelle. The man was crying and cutting himself with stones. Uh huh. But when he saw Jesus afar off. But when he saw my Lord, Rochelle, all that stuff had to cease. Some of y'all won't see Jesus. I'm trying to show him to you, but you won't see him. You won't take out the time to listen to this old man. Well, because he don't speak that good. And he, he yell and he never do a little dance to keep us entertained. I can't do that. I'm trying to get you to see the king. His name is Jesus, and he's the savior of the whole world. Will you see him? But when that demon spirit song, what did it say, Rochelle? But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Uh-huh. And cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus? What have I to do with thee, Jesus? All of you that says, oh, I just don't want to go to no church. I ain't going to no church. Uh -huh. That's that spirit inside of you saying, what have I to do with you, Jesus? I don't want to be a part of that. Some of y'all are saying, well, yeah, I just don't want to be a part of church. I don't want to be in that stuff. It's too late, friend. The very moment you were born, you're in it. You're either going to live for him or you're not. From the very moment of birth, soon as you come out the womb, hallelujah, you've entered. Hallelujah to his name. And when you're old enough to make a choice, <laughs> you're held responsible. Read on, Rochelle. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Don't torment us. It ain't our time, please. Uh, I'm pleading with you. Don't torment me now. Don't send me to the pit right now. Uh -huh. See, those angels, that thing that's in him ain't been bound like these other angels. Mm -hmm. Read on, Rochelle. For he said unto him, Come out of the man. This is Jesus talking. Clean spirit. Mm -hmm. And he asked him, what is thy name? Now, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Rochelle, we're going to just going to be a part three. 
I see my time. But those of you that got the black letter Bibles, let me quickly apologize. Uh -huh. If all those letters are in black, Rochelle is, is reading the words of Jesus. And he asked the spirit what his, what his name was. Uh -huh. And he asked him, he said, what is thy name? These are Jesus speaking. And what they say, Rochelle? And he answered, saying, Start from the top, honey. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. So listen. Here is one man, uh -huh, demon possessed. He's cutting himself. This one man's body sees Jesus come. It's something in that man that knows who Jesus is. And he says to Jesus, don't torment us. Uh, please don't do this right now. Don't send us away from where we are. And Jesus asked him, what is your name? And they respond, uh, my name is Legion, for we are many. One man with many in him. Uh -huh. See, a legion is anywhere from uh, 3,000 to 6,000. Uh -huh. uh, or the Roman legion, when they had a legion of men, it was 6,000 men. So this man, Rochelle, had at least uh -huh, 3,000 demons in him and as many as 6,000 in that one body. Do you think I'm making it up when you're reading it right there on the, on the screen there? What do you say the name was, Rochelle? My name is Legion. For we are many. Mm -hmm. Now listen, friend. That thing that's in you, uh -huh, it came from somewhere. In fact, uh, Rochelle, I'm going to go to Jude real quick, and then I'm going to finish this next week. Get me Jude. Start me at chapter 3. And I want to go to maybe, uh, I'm sorry, Jude chapter 1. There's only one chapter. Start me at verse 3. And we'll go to 7. Now I hope you have been taking notes. Hallelujah to his name. Uh -huh. The things that have possessed that man, they are not them angels uh -huh, that was cast out of heaven. Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now, where did that happen uh, from Adam on until the day? It didn't. It occurred before that. So they locked away. Now, some other angels that Rochelle going to read about here, uh, we're going to find out uh, where they come from. Mm -hmm. If you get there, honey, read it. We love when I gave all diligence. Uh -huh. I'm giving them a little warning right here. Uh -huh. Jude is giving you a little warning right here. And then he's going to give us some instructions and tell us what things come from. Uh -huh. uh, but beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, the same salvation that you and I have, Betty, ain't nothing different. Read on, uh, Rochelle. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith. That we should earnestly keep fighting for the faith, which was once given us to us, because somebody going to come in here and try to change it. Read on. For there are certain men crept in unaware. You see? For there are certain men that have crept in unaware. There are certain men who used to be with us, uh -huh, but they ain't with us no more, Rochelle. They crept in unaware. They weren't with us from the beginning. Certain men that tell you, well... Yeah, it ain't wrong. It ain't wrong to pledge. Certain men that come in and crept in that says, uh, God is sending a new, a new Holy Ghost. That's what it's talking about, them men. Read on. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Mm -hmm. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness mm -hmm. and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I would... Will therefore put you I will therefore put you in remembrance. Uh -huh. Now there goes some people talking about, well, well, Donnie, you can't say that about Pastor Hyde because he was struck by lightning. And so God with him, maybe he need another strike. Hallelujah. Just because God raised him don't mean God won't let him go right there to the pit. What is wrong with y'all? There are many people that have God have done a special thing for and they turned their back and walked away from him. You don't think so? Well, listen to what Jude says. He going to uh, put you in remembrance of some things. Read on, Rochelle. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, what he do? Destroyed he them. destroyed them. He saved them, and because they were disobedient, he destroyed them. Read on. And afterward, destroy them that believe not. And the angels which kept not their first... Now, this is very important. Highlight this. In the angels which kept not their first estate. 
Now, this is not talking about Lucifer and the third part that I gave you in Ezekiel, that I gave you in Isaiah. This is a different set. This is not the same set. Read it, Rochelle. What did it say? And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness mm -hmm. unto the judgment of the great day. Uh-huh. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, wait a minute. What happened in Sodom and Gomorrah? They went after strange flesh. That's what they did. Uh-huh. There were men, young men, old men going after other men. There were these men that went after the angels, Rochelle, that tried to have sex with them two angels. They said, bring out to us, lot them two men that came in there. Bring them out to, to us so we may get to know them. And they weren't talking about, hi, how you doing? No, they wanted to have sexual intercourse with those angels. Uh-huh. This is what this is talking about here. These angels that are bound away, Rochelle, uh -huh, and it says, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, so he's comparing the two. Read that, girl. It says, and the angels who kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he had reserved an everlasting chain mm -hmm. in the darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire hallelujah close your book i'm going to give the rest of this rochelle i am at my point where i know people ain't going to listen no more and this is very important these angels right here that i've just talked about we talked about them in second peter uh, the second chapter and here we are talking about these same angels in the book of jude these are not Listen, these are not the angels that fell with Lucifer. This is not them. Hallelujah to his name. This is a different group. And now they're uh, bound away. But their children is the thing that possessed that man and that are possessing a lot of you. That are possessing these lying pastors. And next week, we're going to finish up warning you about them. We need to let you know who the enemy is. You're better able to fight. When you know who your enemy is, you ain't just out there wildly swinging. No, you know who the enemy is. Hallelujah to his name. Friend, I'm here to warn them. Hallelujah to his name. And we're going to pick up exactly where I left off uh, here in Jude, Rochelle. I have not forgotten about the book of Acts, my foundational scriptures. We're getting back there. Uh -huh. And... Uh, uh, speaking of my foundational scripture, there are some of you, today may be your last day hearing Pastor Harmon. Not that God's going to take me. It's that you're going to be gone because you re refuse to accept his word. You refuse to accept this warning. Hallelujah. So today, my friend, this may be your last opportunity to come and join the king. This may be it for you. It may be curtains for you. You may not even see the rest of the day. But right now, while the warm blood is still pumping warm in your veins, you got a chance to say, God, I accept you. I'm sorry. This is what I've done. I've allowed my children, and even I've done it myself. I made a pledge to, to these old sororities, and I'm faithful to them, but I'm not faithful to you. Is this you, friend? Have you done this thing? Are you one of those that are talking about you waiting on a new Holy Ghost? Is that you that I'm not going to speak in tongues no more because, see, there's a new Holy Ghost coming. Is that you? Well, friend, I hope it's not. <laughs> but for those of you that yet have a chance, come on and let's go and talk with the king. His name is Jesus, and he's the savior of the whole world. Father God in heaven, I come before you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father, there are some today that have heard your word. I've gave it all I know to give. I've said everything I know to say, God. Whatever you put on my heart, I did not hold anything back. I gave it all. And Father, there are a few that have followed me. And you know where they are and who they are. Friend, if that's you, tell God you repent of your sin. Tell him you're sorry. Out of the sincerity of your heart, tell him you're sorry. God, forgive me. I see that I was wrong. I'm sorry for my lifestyle. I'm sorry for my behavior. I'm sorry for the things that I've done. And this very day, this very moment, I renounce all those things. 
I'm not going back to them. I'm not going to participate in them. I renounce them and I proclaim the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me. Wash me and make me clean. Make me a part of your family. I want to walk with the king. I'm not ashamed of you. I'm going to stand for you. I see and saw my way and it wasn't right before you. I ask you to forgive me. And I know your word said you would forgive me if I repent and believe. And Lord, I have repented and I've meant it in my heart and I believe your word. I believe the gospel and I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. I invite you into my heart to be the Lord of my life. And Lord, I will roll up my sleeves and I will start to fight for you and your word. I will bear up those that proclaim your word in Jesus' name. You are mine and I am yours. In Jesus' name. Thank God. And amen. Hallelujah to his name. Friend, Pastor Harmon has come to warn you. Hallelujah to his name. I have come to warn you. <laughs> I have come to give you warning. Have you accepted the warning? Or are you just going to turn me away? Are you just going to say, oh, he's crazy. Oh, he's jealous. Oh, he's mad. Or are you going to accept the warning? Are you going to accept the truth that I have given to you? Are you going to accept it? Friend, I wish that you would. Hallelujah to his name. Let me give you the death clock of many people that wish they had accepted the warning but didn't. Hallelujah. The death clock again reported numbers as of midnight. And as of midnight, the death clock here in the United States says that 4,075 souls have gone. Hallelujah to his name. Friend, most of them, if not all, most, if not all, are right here in the pit, never to experience God's grace, never to experience his mercy. Friend, if you have never heard this gospel, 2 Corinthians uh -huh, tells us, 4 and 3 says, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And friend, God has sent me here to find you, and I'm doing my best to find you. If you have not heard this gospel, it's because you lost. But God has sent out this search party to find you. Today, it's a search party of four of us here. And we have worked and prayed and gave you a video and tried to help you. This is all we were able to do, four of us. And I think you all have done a good job. And I'm sure God is proud of us. But there are some who have done absolutely nothing. And they claim to be our Lord's. I'm telling you, they are imposters. There are many of us that are preaching the truth, but nobody will listen to us. But friend, those of you that heard us today and listened, thank God for you. Please share this message. And if it's the Lord's will, we hope to see you uh, next week at the same time and, and give you more of this message. Warn them. Thank God for you there on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and rumble and if it be the lord's will we hope to see you next week at the same time at 11 10 a.m and until that time take care of yourselves and each other and so long from way of life ministries goodbye